friends uh, welcome today we will be discussing uh, three areas one is uh, we will try to understand who is a manager in a company who is an officer in a company and what is the meaning of key management personnel key management personnel are uh, or key, key management persons are report to us game so these are the three terms we will try to understand so let me share the screen right now So first, to let us first understand what is the meaning of officer. The meaning of officer is defined in section 2, clause 59. If you try to understand it, what is this? Exact meaning is that officer includes any director. You know who is a director. In you know, every company has a, got a board of directors and each member to the board of directors is a director. What is the exact meaning of director? Who can be called as the director? What is the meaning of board? All these things we will be learning subsequently in a separate session. We will be learning when uh, we will be covering the director part. But right now you understand, director means who is a member of the board of director, is a director. So directors are also officers of the company. Secondly, who else is the officer of the company? If you read the second item, can you read it? It's the manager. Who is manager? That definition is also there. So that will be going through that. Third one is the key management personnel or KMP. So these two meanings will be understanding who is a manager and who is a key management person. And also all of them are officers. If someone is a key management personnel, he is an officer, director is an officer, manager is an officer, or any person in accordance to whose direction or instruction, the board of directors or any one or more of the directors are accustomed to act. If the board is accustomed to listen to somebody else's direction or is to follow somebody else's order, so that person, even if he is not a director, he can still be called as the officer of the company. Understood? This many director is an officer, manager is an officer, key management personnel, who are key management personnel separately will be learning. They are definitely officers of the company. But what is important is that any person in accordance to accordance with whose direction or instruction the board of directors or any one or more of the directors is or are accustomed to act. If the board is accustomed to act, the board is uh, listening to somebody else or, or somebody else's uh, direction, that person will be still considered as the officer. He may not be actually holding any position, but still that person can be regarded as official. Did you understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, next term we would like to understand is about who is manager. Manager is also a game. Okay. Manager. Manager means an individual who subject to the superintendent's control and direction of board of directors has the management of the whole or substantially whole of the affairs of the company. That means this is a person, manager, who is managing the whole of the company or if not whole, substantially whole. That means almost whole of the company is managed. Managed in the sense is that is under his superintendence or under his control or this is under his direction. Okay. And that individual can be referred to as manager. He might be playing all these roles. Superintendent's control and direction is the responsibility of that person. Did you understand? And that person is reporting to the board of directors. In fact, ultimately, it is the board of directors who is responsible for superintendent's control and direction. And this person is executing all these things. And he is managing the whole of the company or you can say whole of the affairs of the company or substantially whole of the affairs of the company. And that includes a director. That means whether the director is a manager, yes, director is a manager. Or any other person uh, occupying the position of a manager by whatever name called. He is occupying the position of the manager. You may call something else. You may give any kind of designation that doesn't matter. But he is managing the whole of the, whole of the affairs of the company or substantially whole of the affairs of the company. 
Okay, it's managing means he is reporting to the board, and board is responsible for superintendence, control, and direction. Did you understand? This is the meaning of management. Next point is that who is key management personnel? This is important for us. Key management personnel in relation to company means first of all, chief executive officer. Who is a chief executive officer? We can understand CEO. Second is MD. Managing director is the one more key management personnel. Then manager is a key management personnel. Manager just just now we have understood who is a manager. He is a KMP. Right. Then who next? Can you read it out? Who is also a KMP? Key management personnel. First is CEO, MD, manager. Next. The company secretary. Company secretary. Company secretary. That also we will be learning who is a company secretary. He is also a KMP. Then WTD. WTD means old time director. He is also a KMP. Next is CFO. CFO is also a key management personnel. Right. Now, these are defined. Then one more thing. Such other officer, not more than one level below directors, who is in whole time employment, designated as key management personnel by the board. That means board has designated that person as key management personnel. Okay, and he should not be not, uh, and he should be not more than one level below the directors. So either he must be a director's level person, or maybe one step below, but not further below. One step below the level of directors. That person can also be referred to as KMP or key management person. He should be designated as key management person. And then who else? One more. Any other officer as may be prescribed. Earlier, we have already seen what is the meaning of officer. Any other officer can also be regarded, can be considered as key management personnel if it is prescribed. So, this is the meaning of key management personnel, which is important for us. Okay. So, if you show you this chart, yeah, you have any query? Yes, sir. So the whole time director is different than the group of directors, sir. Sorry, I couldn't understand. Please repeat the question. Sir, director is different than the group of directors. But I understood. The voice was not clear, but what I understood your question is that whether old time director is different from group of directors, that is what you are asking, right? Now, what do you mean by group of directors? Yes, group sir, of directors, yes. what I feel you mean board of directors you are referring to. The entire group right, of directors, sir. you can call it as the board of directors, that is different. Whole time directors means we'll be understanding that definition. Whole time directors means 100 person is director in this company. One person can be whole time director only in one company. That means full time is reporting for this company. One cannot be whole time director in more than one company. One can be director in multiple companies. Okay, there is a maximum limit that will be learning later on when we are learning director's chapter. Maximum one can be uh, director up to a certain level, number of companies. I think it is 20 now. We will see it at that point of time. But if you talk about whole time director, WTP, one person can be maximum director Director, uh, whole time director only in one company. And th that is different. WT is different from board of directors. Okay. Is it clear to you? Sir. Okay, fine. Yes. Okay, any other query? No, sir, that's it. No. Once again, you may have a look at this definition. Section 2, Clause 51. CEO, MD, Manager, CS, WTD, CFO, and any other person who is designated as KMP, and any other officer as may be prescribed. 
Okay, this is the meaning of KMP or key managerial personnel. You can have a look at this chart now. You can have some idea. All of them are can be regarded as KMP. Or you can say CEO, MD, WTD, CFO, manager, company secretary, any other person as may be specified, and KMP if it is designated. All of them are key management personnel. Okay. Now let us see. You know, CEO is an KMP. Who is CEO? An officer of the company who has been designated as such by it. That means company has designated a person as CEO. He has been designated as such. By it means by the company. Company has designated that person as CEO. That person will be report to as CEO. Okay. Right. So then CEO is in KMP. Next is you see MD, managing director. Let us say who is a managing director. Director, you know, who is a director is a member of board of directors. Now, managing director means a director who, by virtue of articles of the company, you already know what is articles of a company. So by virtue of articles of a company or an agreement with the company or a resolution passed in general meeting or by board of directors, it's entrusted with substantial power of management. Here the key words here is substantial power. These, these are the key words. So substantial powers of the management is entrusted with that person who, is, who can be called as managing director. Okay, he has substantial power to manage the affairs of the company and includes director occupying the position of MD by whatever name called. You may be calling that person as managing director. You may call it some, something else. You may call him as president of the company. Anything you may call him. But that means whatever designation you may give. But if his uh, substantial power is entrusted with that person through these means, by AOA or by an agreement or by resolution passed in general meeting or resolution passed by board of directors, then that person shall be considered as the, shall be referred to as managing director. Okay, but here substantial power. But here's next explanation clarifies that for the purpose of this clause, these are not regarded as substantial powers. So powers to do administrative acts are routine nature when authorized by the board such as power to fix common seal of the company to any document or bank or draw or endorse check or to draw or endorse any negotiable instrument or sign any certificate of shares or direct registration or transfer of shares. These are, this shall not be deemed to be substantial powers. Substantial power means must go beyond these routine activities. That person can be called as MD. Okay, so CEO is a key management personnel, MD is a key management personnel, like see WTO, CFO, manager, manager we have already seen, company secretary, etc. We will be seeing one by one. And then let us see who is a company secretary. Company secretary is also a key managerial person. Means a company secretary as defined in clause C of section 1 of subsection 2 of the Company Secretaries Act 1980. That means to understand who is a company secretary, we have to report to company secretaries act. Okay, who is appointed by the company to perform the functions of the company secretary. So there are certain companies who are supposed to appoint a company secretary, full-time company secretary. secretary needs to be appointed for that company. We'll look at that aspect also. So first of all, we need to now refer to the company secretary act, act to understand who is a company secretary. So if you refer to the company secretary, it says company secretary means a person who is a member of the institute. Here institute means institute of company secretaries of India. Okay, so the members of institute of company secretaries of India are called as company secretary. And if such a person is appointed as the company secretary, then he will be referred to as the company secretary of the company. He's functioning the uh, he is performing the functions of the company secretary, then that person can be referred to as company secretary or simply secretary. 
sir yes, sir yeah please sir. exactly here it's the same thing one person can be company secretary of so many companies sir answer is no one person cannot become company secretary in so many companies okay one person can be company secretary only in one company ha huh. okay. that person if he is a member of the company secretary institute then he is by name he is a company secretary he can practice as a company secretary but he cannot uh, be an employee company secretary in more than one companies he can provide company secretary services to multiple companies but in this case he is not a secretary to the company he is practicing independently he is practicing as a company secretary that is different thing okay but once he is appointed to be company so you your voice voice is breaking. i'm unable to hear your voice is breaking okay sir sir sorry sir then when once it is okay i would be asking yeah so now yeah so let me clarify what i understood is that your question was whether one person can be appointed as company secretary more than one company answer is no once a person is appointed in one company then he is the company secretary to that company okay but one person who is a company secretary by qualification or is a member of company secretary institute then that person can provide company secretary ship services to multiple companies but here he is a practicing company secretary he will not be referred to as the company secretary specific to a company is it clear to you okay yes sir yes sir so who is a company secretary have understood that he should be a member of the institute of company secretaries in india there is one more concept what is the company secretary in practice this company secretary in the practice are means they are independent company secretaries they provide services to various companies okay but because they are practicing company secretaries they are not uh, a company secretary employee they are not key management personnel okay when i say company secretary is a key management personnel that means company secretary which is who is who has been appointed by the company as company secretary in that case there can be one company secretary can be attached with one company only okay did you understand yes yeah now in which case in which situation one company needs to appoint a company secretary if the paid up share capital is 10 crore rupees or more then whole time company secretary is required and once one time whole time company secretary is required the company has to appoint a company secretary and the same company secretary cannot be appointed in other company but if it is not so that means whole time company secretary is not required then what can be done then practicing some company secretary can provide services okay because in that situation full time company secretary or whole time company secretary is not required by the company practicing company secretary can provide services to multiple company but a whole time company secretary cannot are you getting it Okay. Now, similarly, next concept we'll be learning: who is an whole time director? Whole time director means director in the whole time employment of the company. Every whole time key management personnel of the company shall be appointed by means of the resolution of board containing the terms and conditions of the appointment, including remuneration. So, once someone is the key management personnel or whole time key management personnel then board has to pass a resolution containing the terms and conditions for appointment and including remuneration the whole time kmp shall not hold office 
in more than one company except its subsidiary company in this at the same time that means once someone is the full time officer then he can hold offices only in one company but however the same person person can manage a subsidiary company also that's a company subsidiary company you know what is subsidiary company otherwise he cannot be uh, a managerial person a key management person in some other company whole time means only in one company okay did you understand yes or no yes sir okay and in case the office of the whole time key management personnel is vacated the resulting vacancy shall be filled up by board at a meeting of the board within 6 months from the date of such vacancy in case this office whole time key management personnel office gets vacated that that will be filled up by the board within 6 months understood who is a whole time director whole time director means he is holding office only in one company Yes, sir. CEO, we have understood. MD, we have understood. WTO, WTD, we have understood. Manager, we have understood. Company secretary, also we have understood. Okay, then CFO will be understanding. And these two things, any other officer as may be specified as that is uh, no explanation required. It is itself is very clear. Then any person who is appointed as KAB, that is also very clear. But now we want need to understand what is the meaning of CFO. Is it clear up to this? Yes. Okay. Let us see. CFO. CFO means very simple definition. A person appointed as CFO. If company has appointed someone as chief financial officer, then he will be reported to us. And once he is CFO, he is a key management person. Okay. Okay, this is the meaning sir, of sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Sir, one uh, company secretary can be appointed as CFO, sir. Is that possible? Sorry, sir. Please repeat it. Repeat the question. Sir, sir, sir. As we have just now, we have studied about company secretary. That yeah. company secretary can be appointed as CFO, sir. Company secretary can be appointed as CFO. Yes, there is no restriction that a CFO as regards to CFO qualification. So, company secretary can be appointed as CFO. Yes, answer is yes. Okay. Any other query? Yes, no, sir. Sorry for interruption, sir. No, you can be my fail free to ask this kind of questions. If the straight answer is the law, then I'll be able to give you. If it is not there, then I have to uh, think over that. Okay, there may not be direct answer in the act itself. In that case, we have to search for the possible answer. Okay, once we know these are the key management personnel, so as regards to their appointment, certain rules needs to be followed. Right. So these rules you can. Call it the rule specific rules that is company's appointment and remuneration of managerial personnel rules. So for managerial personnel's appointment, these rules needs to be followed. And uh, yeah, so these rules are some specific rules that may not be relevant for us, but what is relevant? Most of the things uh, just now we have discussed. Okay, let me now quickly summarize what we have learned so far. Objective was to understand who is a key management personnel and what is the meaning of officer, what is the meaning of uh, this thing manager. First of all, we understood officer includes all the all of them, director, manager, KMP, any person who may not be appointed but board is accustomed to listen to him. Board is accustomed to listen his direction. Board is accustomed to listen his. instruction that person will be still be regarded as officer did you understand yes sir so officer in process so even if there is no position in the company no technical position that person can be still regarded as an officer 
and that person may be also regarded as a key management person. Now, who is a manager? Who manages the whole or substantially whole of the affairs of the company? So he is managing this. Thing. But while he managing, he is under the superintendent's control and direction of the board of directors. So ultimately, the board of directors controls the company. Company is under their superintendent's and direction, but that is executed by managers. So this person who is managing the whole or substantially whole of the affairs of the company he is the manager. And when I say he is the manager, the manager includes director or any other person occupying the position of the manager by whatever name called. You may call him a manager or not, that doesn't matter. But he is occupying. Occupying the position of the manager means he is actually managing the whole or substantially the whole of the affairs. Then he is still a manager. So directors are also managers. And having understood that, when coming to uh, the concept of key management personnel. So these are the people who are included. CEO, MD, Manager, CS, WTD, CFO and such other officers but not more than one level below the directors who is in whole time employment and designated as KM. He has been designated as KMP means he is a KM. And such other officers as may be prescribed. This has been explained in this chart. This chart explains that who can be recognized as our KMPs. These are the KMPs, key management person. Okay. Then who is CEO? Just now we have discussed who is designated as CEO, he is CEO. Then who is manage, managing director? Director who by virtue of articles of association of the company, that means the articles of association of the company must have been mentioned that he is our managing director. Or he might have entered into an agreement with the company to act as managing director. Or in the general meeting or in the board meeting, a resolution must have been passed appointing someone else, someone as a managing director. Then he is a managing director. And he's entrusted with substantial powers. The substantial powers, these two words have to be understood very carefully. A substantial power as regards to management of the affairs of the company. Okay. And substantial power doesn't mean that routine administrative powers, like power to fix common sales, signing bank documents, signing certificate, sales certificate. Okay. Or managing registration of transfer of shares. These are not uh, substantial powers. These are routine activities. Every company, this thing happens. Sir? Yes, please. Sir, merger, acquisition and all that. Can it come in substantial power, sir? Merger, acquisition and all that, if he's taking any decision into that? Yeah, that is one of the power. Merger, acquisition decisions that will be taken by the entire board. Okay. Right. It's a board's decision. It's not a power of a one person to do right, this. Right. 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 But sir, substantial power would come under what, sir? So any two, three example of that, sir? So you can think of, suppose, majority of policy decisions are taken by that person. Hmm. Okay. So we have to see what are the policy decisions. So then on that basis, we can conclude that these are the Policy decisions are not routine decisions. Right, right. Okay, they are something like strategic decisions. So if these decisions are taken by one person, so we can call that person as the, you can say he is enjoying substantial Substance. powers. He can be considered as the managing director. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yes, but in addition to that, these conditions are also relevant. What are these conditions? He must be appointed as the or he must be uh, a director by virtue of articles or agreement or resolution. Okay. And he is entrusted with substantial powers. Then that person can be called as the major director. Okay. 
Okay, suppose company is planning to enter into a new field of business. Business is allowed within the articles of us, within the memorandum. Object clause allows that thing, but now company is taking a decision and they let us say that decision is taken by a person. You can say he is enjoying substantial power because he has taken a policy decision. Okay. Then who is a company secretary? If you want to understand, then actually you have to refer to the company secretary's act to understand who is a company secretary. And company secretary act says who is a member of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India. So once someone is a member of the company secretary, uh, Institute of Company Secretaries of India, he becomes company secretary. Okay. But he can be company secretary of a particular company only if he is appointed as the company secretary as a particular company. Once he is appointed as a company secretary, now he becomes the full time company secretary for that company. He cannot be company secretary with some other except subsidiary company. But let us say he is not getting appointed, he is doing his individual practice, then he becomes a practicing company secretary. He is not a whole time company secretary. In that case, he's, if he's not a whole time company secretary, he can provide company secretary services to many companies. Right? A whole time company secretary can provide service only to one company. But a practicing company secretary can provide services to multiple companies. Okay. And just we are also discussing that thing. In certain situations, certain companies are required to appoint whole time company secretaries only. In which situation? When the paid of share capital is 10 crore rupees or more, then you cannot manage with part time company secretary, practicing company secretary. You need to appoint a whole time company secretary. Did you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So, loosely, many times you talk, he's the managing director, he's a director, he's an officer. But you see, these are technical terms, and these terms have been defined in the company law. So, concepts are very theoretical, but sometimes we need to refer to the definition to understand what is the exact meaning of that. Okay. So, now we have understood who is a managing director. Who is a CEO, who is a CFO. So all these terms are defined in the company. You can refer to, you can visit to MCA site, you can see the Companies Act and the clauses I'm telling you, you can refer to that, you'll be able to understand all these terms. Okay. Yes, sir. CFO. As I told you, who is appointed as CFO. Okay, and whenever a company is thinking to appoint a key management personnel or key managerial personnel, he has to follow the rules. Appointment and remuneration of managerial personnel rules will apply. So this is the basic understanding about the meaning of officers, manager, and KMP. You have any other query? No, sir, sir. 